Hi, welcome everyone. This is a webinar recording of the meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. And my name is Angela Mills and I'm off camera because I am busy baking cookies. But um, this will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and it will be shared out on the Cultural Council webpage at amherstma.gov. And at this time, I'd like to recognize the co-chairs, Julian Applegate and Matt Holloway. And I will make one of you host and one of you co-host. And I take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Okay, I will read the script. Um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted in person and via remote means in accordance with applicable law. This means that members of the public body as well as members of the public may access this meeting in person um or via virtual means you know what sorry folks i'm reading the wrong one <laughs> and i just got a new script in my glasses today and i'm i'm really struggling to see so let me start over pursuant to uh chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 this meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish to um julie i have it Oh, please do. Please go right ahead. <laughs> Rachel's having trouble getting in. Sure. Let uh, me, yeah, in, let me... in short, in short, this is just the announcement from the attorney general's office that says that, um, you know, public open public meetings may be held remotely over Zoom. Um, and that was recently extended. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted. Every effort is made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via Zoom. Um, in the event that we're unable to do so, we will post the request. Recording, this recording uh, will be on the Amherst Media YouTube channel a couple of days after the um, after the session is over. And uh, you can always reach out to Julianne or myself um, through the town manager's office if you have any questions or concerns. And Rachel is trying to join. I just sent her another link. Okay. Uh -huh. Should we do our audio checks while we wait? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So if you can just let us know that you can hear and be heard and we can hear you. Um, Christy? Hi, everyone. Eleanor? Yes, hi. Uh, Kimberly? Hello. Sylvie? Hello. And Cody? Can we hear Cody? Cody, can you just let us know if you're there? Yes, I'm here. There we are. Thank you. All right. Great to see everybody. Does anyone know where in Zoom I can click to share the credentials with uh, Rachel? I found it. So... Um, I apologize. Usually I try to send out the agenda to the group. It, it is posted publicly, but we didn't send it out to our group of attendees. Um, but I think the main things that we wanted to talk about, um, well, you know, we will always have time for public comment if there's any members of the public, but I think we wanted to um, talk about the community survey, probably most importantly, because for our new members, um, just bear in mind that we can set aside up to 20% of our annual MCC allocation. We've never set aside that much, but we could set aside 20% to run local programs. Um, and I think that the work that has gone on with this survey is going to give us some really good information about what kinds of things the community is looking for. And that conversation, it's good to have that conversation early. We don't have to make a final decision on this matter today, but it's it's good to get a ballpark idea of how much we're going to set aside, because that, of course, drives how much we can then distribute to grantees, to applicants. Um, so I think that's that's probably the most important part of this meeting is for us to discuss the um, community survey. We do have a deliberation schedule based on, this, on the doodle. Thank you, um, Julianne, for making that happen, um, which we can, we'll email out and then we can also talk about a little bit. Uh, and then I think the most important thing for 
particularly for Kimberly and Sylvie, our, our new who haven't been through the process yet, is we'll just talk about sort of what the what the grant review process looks like and feels like for you. And I think it's in it's it's in good shape. I I, I feel like we've we've really iterated this. That's a good jargony word. We've really tried this several times over the past few years and gotten something that moves moves pretty smoothly through a large number of grants. Um, so uh, with that said, uh, Rachel, can you hear us? I think she signed on using your link, Julian. Yeah, she's texting saying that, yes, she can. Um, I can hear you. Thank you. I don't know why it's not working on my computer. The link, I've tried uh, several approaches several times, but I'm here. <laughs> well, that's what matters. We're glad you are. And it sounds like you can hear us too. Um, right. So in terms of presenting the community survey material, um, do you I, I can certainly screen share the Google form and just like look at the raw info there uh, unless you have any kind of more aesthetically pleasing um, um no, you're talking to me right, Matt? Yeah, okay. at the moment, no, because the survey is still open, so I haven't done anything like in terms of you know um processing the data and that actually looks pretty good if you just show those pie charts. <laughs> as they are yeah definitely um okay so let me let me do a screen share i will say this i, I think we're going to close it in a day or two we probably won't have another i believe our, we're planning our first meeting is october 29th and we're going to start reviewing grants if they're if they're open by then so it would be good to at least start to have some some ballpark impressions of this survey tonight i think Sure. Um, let's see. I'm calling in from my phone because, like I said, I couldn't get access to um, to the meeting on the on my computer. So, if you don't mind going ahead and sharing your screen, I, I'll just pull up the data myself on my end. I will. So, okay, I will. Let me. Um, yeah. Thanks. Let me just find the right view on this because. Okay. Yeah, it does have some it has some pie charts. That's always good. Uh, oh. Now I thought I was the co-host. Mm, uh, let's see. Uh, you're definitely a co-chair, it says. Let's see. Yeah. Make co-host. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. And then I will share this screen with this. Um, and so I'll kind of let Rachel, Rachel, I, I, I realize with a phone in one hand, I mean, if you're able to talk us through it, please do. If not, we can kind of do it together. Sure. I think right now um, what we're seeing is we've gotten 70 responses so far. Um, I don't know if we had a particular number in mind in terms of how many we were hoping to re re replies to get. But I think as um, I've looked at, as I've tracked the data over time, it's been pretty consistent in terms of the percentages that you see here. Can everyone see okay or should we read things out in terms of um, for example, the first question, how do people find out about local activities, cultural activities, and social media, word of mouth? Actually, word of mouth seems to be the most um, uh, effective, I, I suppose, most popular, followed by print, media, newspapers, or flyers. This so is, This is great because for those of you who are new to this, one of the things that we ask um, in the application is what folks marketing um, plan is, you know, how are they going to get the word out? So, you know, now we can, we know how people are hearing about it. Great. Yeah, so yeah, then the next question is what are the, uh, what people think are the most important priorities for the type of programs they would like to see? locally. And again, I think over time, it's been pretty consistent in that people, the top um, choices, because we asked people to choose five, and the top choice has consistently be projects that advance cultural diversity, and um, festivals and fairs, programs for teens and um, young adults and music programs, hands-on and interactive programs. So I think you all can see that based on the choices we gave people there, you know, there's the type of programming that I like to see and also um, certain target audiences and the format for programming that I like to see. So the questions were asked from several different directions and hopefully we can, um, you know, combine, we, we, I mean, this, this could help us um, 
um, when we're looking at the grant applications in terms of um, how to prioritize and maybe have an even distribution of the type of programs and um, you know the target audience. So so hopefully it's informative for the, for those reasons. Um, can I, that's can I ask a question before we move sure. on? I just um, first of all, when I hover over, does that show up in the screen share? Can you see the full? When I have when I hover, hover over a bar, just give me a thumbs up or not? Because a lot of these names are yes. So says yes. Okay. I mean, well, why don't we tell you what we're seeing though? So hover over one, and it says multidisciplinary. Blah 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 blah. Count twenty three. Right. That's what I was asking. So, right. um, so, so if you hover over the that uh, the multidisciplinary projects, and then I think everyone should be able to see the entire thing, Matt. Right. That's yep. Yeah, okay. So that's right. Uh, so. This is the most important question, in my opinion. Um, and so I just want to maybe just take a moment with it, because this is the first time that most folks are actually seeing it. So if we kind of go the most, the highest, and, and also the way that the scoring happens, it's just I had to think about this for a minute myself. So each person who filled this out had five five choices, evenly weighted. So in other words, it's not a number one, number two, number three, number four, number, it's just five votes that you can click on. So just think about, you know, it's just an important thing to think about with, with how it came through. So the number one that got 40 votes was cultural diversity. Um, number two is community fairs and festivals. It got 33 votes. Number three is programs for teens and young adults, got 31 votes. Number four is music, got 30. Um, number five is project centering history, reinterpretation, preservation, restoration. Yep. Above uh, promoting the environment has twenty nine. Sorry, yep, environmental awareness. And um, then, yeah, so we we can send out this. Obviously, we can send out a PDF of all this data for folks to actually look at on your own. But I, I just think it's it's worth it to just pause and see if there's any sort of comments or conversation on this on this one. And we still have it open for a little bit longer, but I, I think with seventy responses, and I wouldn't expect huge shifts from here to the end of the, when it closes. There's another piece of context. Well, actually, I, yeah, I would just ask, you know, what, what are folks noticing? What are you, what are you seeing? What are you thinking about with this? Um, it's nice to see community fairs and festivals so high. Like I, I like that. And I, and I wonder if how many of those are people who were kind of at the town block party and were thinking about that while they were there. Um, but it's just nice to see support for that. Um, and yeah, I also am looking at it and I'm like, music is very high. And I guess that makes sense because to me, that's a pretty broad category. Um, and I'm glad that we didn't break it down too much, but I just do wonder within music what people are most looking for. Mm. I kind of had expected it to be a little bit more blended and with without, you know, some of the real highs and lows here. Like I'm surprised to see family friendly events, you know, ranked so low, although maybe it's because we're, it's a cultural council, you know, survey and um, and my kids are older. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not I don't have a bias over there at that point. You know, they pretty much want to do their own things. Right. Um, so. Yeah, I just think it's it's uh, particularly interesting how how it's uh, kind of divided out for us. So the context I was going to put out there that we, we really should be aware of is we made a um, last year we had we had made this decision to run a festival called Spring into Arts, um, and we were going to do that with the bid. And we actually solicited um, our grantees and had a small lineup of grantees who were going to participate in the Spring into Arts event. Um, and then the bid, due to a staffing issue, was not able to make it happen. So we had set aside uh, $7,500 $7, to make that happen. And when the bid pulled out, we made kind of a tentative agreement amongst ourselves to um, you know, consider it for next year. That was kind of always the the idea was always, well, maybe we can do it next year. Um, and then we took 
2,500 of that 7,500 and applied it to the fall block party, um, thanks to Cody's great insight. And so technically there are there's $5,000 that we set aside last year that was at that time directed towards spring into arts. And I, I think that this this current council in, in its new makeup should make its own decision. I don't think we we didn't tie ourselves to that, you know, permanently. But it, that is something, um, you know, that that was certainly you, you know almost happened last year. And so it's worth remembering that this year as we as we go through this process. Yeah, uh, Rachel. Yeah, hi. So I wanted to respond to uh, Eleanor's question and observations um, is that, first of all, the um, the kind of ranking in terms of the, the breakdown of, for example, the, the, the top three or four um, choices here in this category were like that before the, the block party. So the pattern has remained consistent before the block party and afterwards. So I think that that's really interesting. So for example, the projects advancing cultural diversity was always number one and the community fairs was always number two. And um, the music was always high up there as well. So I think that's been really interesting to see over time. And then another point is when we get to the um, age uh, ranges of the people, of the respondents, it, it's actually quite interesting to look at them versus what the replies here are. So we can talk about that when we get there. So it's, you know, what the people who responded um, aren't necessarily advocating for their own interests or like their own target group. So those are the two points I wanted to make. Kimberly, please. Um, yeah, just looking at the results, um, I was kind of thinking about how a lot of these like topics or labels, like they're kind of similar or maybe they can be like put together. So as we kind of come into planning, maybe we can think about like holding like events or projects that like combine multiple aspects into one. Absolutely. Yeah, and again, I mean, we don't necessarily need to make any decisions with this information, but it's it now is this is the perfect time to be looking at it. So thank you again, Rachel. And I should have said this. So this this can inform our conversation about a local activity, but it also um, should inform our review process itself. And as we as we rank our various grants, you know, we should remind ourselves that you know cultural diversity was was the top priority among you know the survey uh community affairs is the second priority you know i mean i think i think this is a good thing for us to anchor some of our deliberation on um obviously it's not binding but it's good guidance for us as a as a council rachel do you still have your hand up or is that just because you're on your phone oh sorry i thought i lowered it oh well it's it's challenging all right we're all... okay okay I'll... yeah i think we can move move on okay great are folks ready to move on yeah um, ages. So pretty evenly spread, I'd say. Oops. Let's see. So 70, 20% were 76 or over. Um, 21% were 61 to 75. 24% were 46 to 60. 14% were 36 to 45. Um, 4.3% and then percents get pretty small coming down here. Yeah, that's, that's why go ahead go ahead Julianne. Yeah, it's 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 tough when you when you consider how much of the population here in in the regional area is college students and grad students that we didn't hear a whole lot from them but you know maybe maybe they're just more kind of in in involved in the institutions um where they're studying and less in in the community. We're gonna change that though. Yeah, yeah like, that's why we've changed that's why the volume, right? Yeah, that's why it's interesting that well over half of the respondents are, you know, people who are middle age and above, but like the, the large largest target group that um that was voted on was programs for teens and young adults. That that's what I the point I was making earlier. Yeah. Um oh, is that right? It wasn't Children is 21%, teens and young, oh wow, 31%, I see, yeah. So it's the older people advocating to, to have more programs for younger people, which is yeah, great, that's great. You know? so yeah. That's great. 
That's okay. probably a lot of parents too. Yeah, I think that's right. Parents just say, my kids got nothing to do at night. <laughs> um, okay, are you aware that artists, schools, and community groups can apply for grants from the Cultural Council? So general awareness um, is there. How many years have you been a resident? Um, it's kind of an interesting spread here. This is number of years in the decades. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to display this data a little bit differently here as far as. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This, so yeah, this it's really, is it's really the... hard to understand like this question like this right now, the way it's, yeah, the, the yeah. form has it presented. But I don't know if this question, I mean, the, this, the response to this question and also the kind of optional one at the end, to what extent that would necessarily impact our decision-making or our, our criteria mm -hmm. or evaluation. So that's, that. I'm not sure. So I don't know what you all think. Well, personally, I, I do think that this last question, the open response is the most interesting by far. Um, I agree with you. It's hard to make any final determinations based on it, but I think this is something that, you know, we'll, we'll commit to sending this out to folks in the next day or two. Um, what do we say we're going to close it, Rachel? The 14th? No, I actually um, thought we would leave it open through the grant um, application deadline. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's yeah. not, that's oh. only the 17th. So, right. Like the weekend, that same weekend. You, you know what we could do is we can close this one and we can, you know, copy it, duplicate it, and make another one that's just generally open. You know, we can always be collecting data, right? Um, but we can we can close and finalize this one and communicate that. I'm going to stop sharing this just because I think that's it's distracting to see that long list of really interesting responses. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll 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 send that out after this one closes and, and then folks can sit with it and, and read it. And, and again, I mean, it can inform our ongoing conversation. It's not a one and done um, piece of information. So I do want to just, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Do we, we want to have a little bit more discussion on that community survey? Um, I, one, one piece that I shared with Julianne and Rachel is that um, the business improvement district has indicated they are not likely going to be able to make the spring into arts happen as the lead partner this next this coming spring, um, which is you know important for us to know because they're really the ones with the most experience putting things on. Um, however, the Amherst Recreation Department has been looking for cultural things to make happen, and so they um, have indicated that they would love to. And the bid, the, the business improvement district, the bid would still provide support. They just can't be the, the lead organizer is basically what they told us. Um, but the rec department is willing to take on that role. So so we do have partners in the community. And I think actually rec is even better because that's a true, you know, that's an actual town agency and probably would hit some of those, you know, youth friendly um, boxes or whatever. So not that we're, we're not bound to any of that, but that's just just some information that I think is important for us as we move forward. Um, I'm about to be dis distracted a little bit. So, <laughs> so I don't, Julian, I mean, should we have conversation about local activities now or should we give people some time to process? Um, local activities. I thought, I thought the next thing was the deliberation schedule. What do you mean by local as far Just, as well, any, any sort of how people are feeling relating to the community survey and what that, what, what that spurs for us, I guess. Well, I guess, you know, the, the, to add on to what you're saying, the challenging thing is while we can set funds aside and we have, um, you know, that's something that we'll have all these wonderful grants applications coming through. Right. And, um, to be able to do something meaningful for the community, the way we did with the, the showcase stage at the fall block party or something even bigger, we do have to kind of hold some funds for for that, which we we are certainly allowed to do. And from from my perspective, um, what happened at the block party was great for the community, right? I mean, it, it was it was transformative. So, um, 
definitely see the value in, in, in doing that. Um, but we're not really held to finalizing that until we really kind of get to the end of everything and we vote, but it, um, on the, on the final grant allocation numbers for, for each grantee, um, but I guess that's something that we we should each think about, you know, and the other part of that is the time and commitment and, and level of effort that folks can put into to make that happen. You know, we have we have a responsibility when we set those funds aside to be sure that that public benefit happens for the community. And, you know, that that's going to take some some effort from all of us to to do that. Right. Otherwise, if we if we can't commit the time, then we really should just flow that money to the the um, grantees individually. I think we have a, a great group, and and there was everyone helped out and pitched in for the block party, and um, you know I know I know the commitments there, so and the energy's there, so I appreciate all of you. Anyone? When do we need to make a decision about this? Well, it, one, I think we need more information to understand what's possible and who the players are, right? But um, definitely before we finalize our vote for uh, the 2024 grants, right? Because we'd have to set this, this um, aside in our budget and know how much we're setting aside and why and and what we intend to happen. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be very plain as well that, you know, we, we had to go back to the MCC, even though it was through no fault of our own with the spring block party. And of course they were understanding that the event didn't happen, but you know, they've, they've got kind of a scorecard for each of these LCCs like us. And, you know, at a certain point, they're not going to keep, you know, giving us the amount of money that they give us if we can't execute on on these local projects. So we are we're expected to be um, effective um, uh, stewards of these funds, right? So if if we were to set something up another year and it fell through, you know, at a certain point, you know, our inability to deliver, whether it's our fault or not, could impact the community where there would be less funds coming here. So, I mean, I, I, I take this very seriously as far as our, our commitment when we set those funds aside, because otherwise we just give it to the artist and let them make the art. You know, we, we don't need to get in the middle unless we really are bringing something um, unique to the community um, in, in our capacity as a cultural council and being able to collaborate with groups and, and being able to, you know, bring all of the artists together that performed with us um, at the fall block party. So I, I, I think it's great, but I just want everyone to understand it's, it's a pretty serious decision, you know, to, to hold those funds. And um, we have to be more organized before we could vote meaningfully on that right now. We don't have enough information tonight. Is there anything more on that, Matt? And I, I just want to take- oh, I think it's well said. I, the only thing I would say is that we have, um, we don't have to make this decision. We can start deliberating yep. and have a couple of deliberation meetings before we make this decision too. So anybody who's feeling any pressure on that, that's not the case. I mean, you know, the the final the the final few meetings are where we get the the budget really straightened out. So we do have time to sort of let this percolate and think about it. Yeah. I do want to take uh, just a quick survey of everybody's schedules right now, um, just to go around as to when people have to hop off. Christy, you have to hop off, and how how many? I need to go to bed because you are not here. You are overseas. I, yeah. I am it's after midnight. So yeah. okay. if if it's okay, is that do you need me for anything? I think I think we're we're good. You you know that we're still finalizing the dates for yep. de deliberation and I shared those with you. And um, I, I've got them in. I mean most of I'm pretty good with most of them. There's yeah, like certainly you can't be there the nights that you're lecturing because we had to alternate yeah. those out yeah. um to get a quorum. But safe I'll travels do... and, okay. and sleep tight. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. So good to see you. Bye, Christy. Okay. And Matt, I, I think you have an event tonight as well. No, no event. 
Okay. All right. I don't know where I got that idea. Does does anyone else have a hard stop? And we do want to to move through this pretty pretty quickly because we do have um, a pretty busy schedule coming up in the upcoming weeks. Uh, Rachel, uh, I need to go between six thirty and six forty. Okay, but that should right. be plenty of time, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. I. Everyone else is good. We're gonna try to move as quickly yeah, as possible. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm later than that too i just need i have to be somewhere at seven so i've just got to make sure i'm off by like 6 50 that's cool and both of you have been through um deliberations before so if you had to to drop a little early we just need to be sure that we can keep cody <laughs> because uh we'll need a quorum to be able to go through this so i just have a hard stop at seven. Oh yeah we've definitely done <laughs> we started at 5 30 cool i just emailed everyone our tentative dates um based on the on the doodle poll and i know it's a long list um and i'll say up front that you know if we can work through things and we don't need all of those sessions you know we're basing this on having almost 100 applications like we did last year um Right now, there aren't that many in, but there are a lot of hours between now and midnight on Monday when the um, grants application system closes out. So um, we, we do expect there to be a mad dash. I think we've got shy of 70 um, between submitted grant applications and um, drafts when I, when I looked earlier today. Um, so, but we, we expect that there'll be quite a bit more. Did everybody get the email with the with the dates? Great. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, God, I, I just just sent it. Yeah. So, you know, the the time involved uh and and I think I'm Matt, I'm just going to blend a little bit about the dates and the schedule and start to move into a little bit about what our process is cuz it's hard to discuss the schedule without understanding what we'll be doing. Mm -hmm. Um when we saw the number of grants coming in last year and having been through some other grant cycles, um, we've evolved our process from what it would have been when I started with the council. Um, we want to ensure that each grant gets um, a fair amount of time for discussion. Uh, so previously we just kind of went through in, in order of the grant application number. And sometimes if you were running out of time at the end, the people who just, you know, had higher numbers, they, we didn't really get to spend the same amount of time, um, in consideration of what they were bringing the community. So we've done two things over the years. One is, is that we have kind of an Excel or Google Sheet kind of scoring system where before we meet, um, we've got, you know, the, the grants that are being deliberated in that particular evening that are scheduled. And we'll, we'll ask each one of you to, to, to go through and give, you know, your assessment, and then we compile all of that. And I'll show an example of that in a minute. And then for the grants, um, deliberation sessions, what we do is we time box the time for each grant. So I'm bringing this up because we have, I guess what, nine or so sessions there, right? So if you look at the total minutes, you know, if we were to give each grantee 10 minutes and there were a hundred grants, that's a lot of time. Um, but by having everyone review the materials ahead of time, give us um, their general assessment and then compiling that to kind of read what the whole council feels like, we can we can give everybody a fair amount of time and move through pretty quickly. So, all right, so now kind of just back to the, the general schedule. For several of us, there are certain nights where you've already responded in the doodle poll that you can't make it. Don't feel badly about that. It was really hard uh, to to make all of these in in the the number of weeks that we have to go through anything. Does anyone have any questions for me just yet? I had a, oh sorry, Rachel, you can go ahead. No, maybe we have the same question. I was just curious, okay. like the the start and finish time. 
for each that of these days. Question, we'll you, okay. You go for it. Okay. Um, what what did we do last year? I think we we tried to keep it to, and was it an hour and a half? I'd love to be able to get it down to an hour, but and maybe we could do that if we only have seventy grants coming in or something. Matt, do you remember exactly what we did? I, I per meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was ninety minutes. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, right now, I, 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 we're still going to go ahead with the five thirty to seven p.m. Right. Yeah. Per yeah. doodle poll. I just yeah. want to confirm that. Thank you. And it's and it's you know we we will have to have a hard stop, you know. But but if we're going through, the hard thing is if we're going through and it looks like we're not going to get through everything, then we'd have to look to start adding meetings and and getting a quorum and and that gets really hard, especially as you guys get into you know, you know, finals and, and, and all that. So we, we are mindful of that. So we really want to be respectful of everyone's time. Eleanor. I was just going to say, I, um, I can make almost all of these. There were a few that I marked down as like, if need be, like I can possibly do it. It just is going to be a really tight squeeze that day. Is there any way for us to know, like, if we're going to have a quorum or that kind of thing, like ahead of time, um, because I kind of meant that to be like, if it's not going to be able to happen if I don't come, I can like move something or do it. Um, well, yeah. and yeah, I, I I think it is kind of tight this this year, right? So I think we we all need to communicate um, closer to all of these dates that there will be a quorum. So if if there's a date that's here, it's because mm -hmm. you know we were able to secure more than a quorum. I don't, I don't think in the end that I had any that were down to, um, just, just, just five. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? So the, the other big one that's out there is the, the last one was not great for a lot of folks. Um, I'd like to move that that uh december 14th because that's when we would finalize our vote and i'd really like to find some time within a couple days of that where where we all can gather and and participate in that vote because that's there's a lot of work that goes up to it but that's that's binding so i i don't really want to keep that date and time since we can't have everyone there but we can we can take that up via via email i guess um rather than take time tonight but if everybody can kind of look at their schedules and um i don't know maybe maybe i just send out another doodle poll for adjacent days around then and i don't even know if you know what your exam schedules will be and all of that or not cuz that's uh that's tough you know that's got to come first for you guys Anything else? Yeah. Um, so Julie, one thing I thought, and I, I know this is like you said, sort of bleeding into the process itself, mm -hmm. but I thought I could show the, an example of the spreadsheet. Um, oh, I have all that pulled up too. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's going to be part of, so we did this last year and I think it was pretty, pretty helpful. I'm really glad, um, you know, everyone can, can be here for this tonight. So I shared um, a link I don't know if everybody's been able to get it for a PDF file that's on my creative cloud. So that was, um, it is the uh, applications kind of panel book from, from two years back, two fiscal years back. And you can kind of scroll through and, and see <clears throat> all the information in there. So right now the grants are going through and I guess I could share my screen to be more interesting. Um, and when they're when they're finished, all of that information gets downloaded and put into um, a PDF that has these bookmarks. Now, if you open up the bookmarks tab, I'm still figuring out how to share here. Sorry, I don't use. I should be getting better at Zoom since we always use it for this. Um, way too many tabs open, folks. 
it's like so I have I mean, if you hover over the boxes in zoom right in the middle is where all your menu of like your actions is are no no i've got kind of share and then what with this being a public meeting and being recorded, you know, and who knows what my kids will be texting me. I kind of didn't want to share everything. So I was trying to share specifically, but Hey, you know, um, this is the modern world that we live in. So I guess I am just going to share my desktop and go for it. Um, so not this. Okay. So this is what I, I sent you and, and in Acrobat, I'm able to kind of go and, and open up the bookmarks tab. So you'll see that there are five examples here at the top, um, which we're gonna go through these as to what we're looking for um, when, we, when we evaluate and deliberate. But then you'll see that there's you know number one, for instance, um, and then each one of these bookmarks, which we have to take some time and add them to the PDF, right? really lets us go from one one grant to the next. Why would we want to do that? Well, there's quite a bit of information that's with any one of these um, these grants. So for instance, but they're all formatted the same. So uh, while it's a lot of pages at a certain point, you'll be able to go through them really quickly. So there's, there's the amount that they're requesting, project description, how many people are served, blah, blah, blah. And and then there'll be some supporting materials usually. So they're kind of attached here. Sometimes in some of the books, um, they're where you can kind of see all of them or there's a letter or something like that, right? So once everything comes in, we'll be able to get something back to you in a PDF that's bookmarked for you to go through it. And then basically we do still go through um, just in order, right? So we'll schedule to do so many in a particular night. So, and then we time box it. I think we were at, I don't know what we did last year, but it was like seven minutes max per, per, per grant. Um, and what we found is, you know, the ones that folks are pretty much in agreement on, right. Um, they can be done pretty quickly, but then when there are questions, uh, and we're getting up at the end of the time, then we we kind of say, okay, we're going to put this in the group of grants that we come back to and move on, right? So let me let me show you what the scoring sheet would look like. So what we do is we will set up, um, actually, no, this isn't the right one. This We had a, a more complicated one, and then we thankfully simplified it. Um, so everybody will, will get, um, access to their own page to fill in. And most of it is, is going to be pre-populated. So you'll have, um, grant numbers, uh, what, what kind of group is applying. You see nonprofits, the name of the group, um, or the person applying, the dates when it should be happening, where it will be happening. Um, and then we're able to say what the total budget is versus what they're asking us. And you'll see here that there are just two columns that are highlighted. And what we've done is to ask each of you to look at the grant in that PDF panel book and then to score it from zero to three, as far as um, how how inclined would you be to to give them all the money that they're asking for um, in the grant application? And there's several things that you'll need to take into into account with that. You know why why do we have the number zero? Uh, the number zero is is there because there are um, going to be times when the 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 project simply doesn't meet our guideline criteria so uh, uh, you know it's 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 kind of a no it's 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 a non it, it's either there's no date no location um it's not it's not accessible it's not open to the public there are a lot of reasons that we would look at something and just say no it doesn't meet our criteria so it, it would be a zero and then as far as just to give you a little bit of the background and the thinking as to why we only went up to three, 
was we're really trying to, <laughs> when people score from zero to 10, then you get a lot of slop in, in how each person weights things. So we've kept it to a, a pretty narrow um, selection of numbers to kind of force people to be a little bit more definitive. Um, which, which I think worked pretty well last year. Um, so what we'll do is everyone will send um, their charts in just before um, the, the meeting with everything updated. This project description came from uh, the Smart Simple site, but you also have the ability um, to, to add some, some remarks here, which I would in, encourage you to do, um, especially if there are questions. And all of this, uh, the the years we've been doing this has only come into, you know, the, the one person who's compiling everything. So your comments aren't shared, shared broadly. And the specific numbers that you entered aren't visible to the entire group. And they're not shared in a way that everyone can see, because we're really just trying to get a feel for where everybody is with this. If anybody, you know, has some, some, key concerns uh, so that we can uh, have an effective conversation. Any questions so far? Okay. So um, I think I shared the, the, I can't remember what I shared back out before the meetings last year. I'll have to go and look. Um, but, but basically, yeah. So this all gets sent in and then we'll have an average kind of number and we can start seeing, you know, for something that's like less than one, um, clearly there are some concerns from, from the whole group as to, you know, whether this has public benefit versus others that, you know, um, it's, it's a unanimous, you know, three or, or, you know, above a 2.5 folks are, are looking at those as being very strong. And even though, you know, we're asking you as far as how likely are you to fund the entire amount, the reality is a lot of times we, we can't fund the entire amount. We have to do partial grants, right? So let's, um, any questions from anyone? I'm going to try, otherwise I'll just try to keep moving. So, uh, Let's let's look at a few of these for the for the example. So I'm going to example one here, and um, Julian. Yes. Do I, I'm just going to give a really quick Please. quick injection? I think just to sort of because this is I feel like this is a lot of screen, there's always a lot a lot of action going on here. But just for for our new members, I, I will I will say this: we've over the years we've kind of tried out really really specific ways to measure and quantify what we thought about grants and what we arrived at last year that worked really well was we have this, this book, this panel group book with like 90, hundred, a hundred grants. And what worked really well was um, just to get the conversation flowing. And so, I mean, what I would do between meetings is I would skim 15 or 20 grants and they would each be three or four pages long. The descriptions are only a paragraph or two. And then I would write out basically zero, one, two, or three in terms of how I felt just my general feeling about that grant. And then I would pop that general feeling into a spreadsheet, send it to Julianne. She is the master aggregator and collator of, of spreadsheets. And then we it really gave us a nice, it was a general enough, like we, it wasn't hyper-specific because we, we had like subcategories last time. I mean- The year before, yeah. That, yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's a, oh, right, a previous one. It's just a nice general, it's a quantitative number that lets us anchor our conversation around a general feeling but it's open enough that we can have a robust, like just verbal discussion about the pros and cons of each grant. And then Julie, the other thing that Julianne gave is the, the time box idea that, you know, we're going to deliberate, we're going to give it a fair seven or however many minutes, you know, we're going to give each one a fair number of minutes to talk about, you know, probably half or more, we don't come to a final decision on, but we at least get a general feel for it. Julianne and I take careful notes. And then we do a second pass through where we make more final decisions. But this is something that it just, it gives us both a quantitative number to anchor the conversation on and enough space for us to just sort of qualitatively give our, our thoughts. Great. Kimberly. 
Um, when we get those applications that you mentioned that maybe don't fit the criteria or kind of almost like an immediate no, do we still give them the full 10 minutes? Uh, we, we, we don't necessarily, yeah, we don't necessarily have to give the, the full, if we're all in agreement, you know, that, that it's outside of the, the criteria, or if we're all in agreement that, yes, it's great. We're happy. We love it. You know, it's, you know, um, we we'll keep moving because uh, it's it's a lot to cover. the The other thing that we haven't discussed yet is kind of how we we open up the discussion. So basically, Matt or I will kind of give a general overview of of you know quickly like kind of what the summary was, and then we will ask if if there is anyone you know who feels strongly about fully funding and fully supporting a grant. Or is there, or, you know, are there people that feel strongly about not funding it at all? Right. And that's a little bit where you can see in the, in the, the numbers that we're getting back and, and um, aggregating that we'll have some, some picture of that. Um, but sometimes it's just one council member who is doing the due diligence to say, all right, yeah, it all sounds good, but look at this, look at this. This is a thing that doesn't meet our guidelines. And, the guideline piece is really something that, you know, all of us have been able to learn with the rest of the council as we go through, you know, the deliberations. It's not anything that that folks just come to the table knowing, you know, so and and there's there's no reason to to not speak up about something, you know, definitely feel comfortable. We you're here because we want to hear from you. And, you know, we'll we'll have fantastic discussions about this. Um but yeah, it's it is really a nice process you'll see as to how we come to collectively understand this because we're collectively understanding it for the community, you know, um, and it's it's a pretty unique process. Does it answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Cool. Matt, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, that's great. You're you're, you're nailing it. So let's let's kind of start looking through one of one of these examples. So you'll see that there's a primary contact. Um, the primary contact can only be for one grant, whether that's um, a group or an organization. Uh, this person can only be primary for for one one grant, and each organization can really can only apply for one 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 grant per year. So they're requesting 1200, it's it's theater, it's an emerging playwright festival. Uh, when, August slash September, and then it's in uh, Barn Theater Studios in Belchertown. So um, the applicant's from Belchertown and it's happening in Belchertown. Uh, however, if it provides public benefit because people from Amherst go to Belchertown to attend events like this, then it's perfectly valid as a regional event for us to, to uh, support and fund it. So estimated uh, number of people served. So um, number of people that will, will participate. And I think this is one that sometimes the applicants don't even fully understand. So it's not just the audience size, but the people who are putting the event on also benefit. So it would be a combination of, of those who are making culture and those who are enjoying culture. Um, and then we get into the uh, project, their summary of it, uh, who's the target audience. Um, so they're going to describe who, who they think will participate and um, then we get into, this is really the one, um, once you've got the summary, then the public benefit. We want them to explain how this is gonna be useful to and, and enjoyable for people from Amherst. Um, so, and then they'll go into who's making this. We wanna be sure that there is public benefit based on uh, there, it being a, a, a quality level, um, of event that can be delivered. And so now we get into like, there are three co-producers. So while we can only have one person leading on a grant, um, Sean here, who is working on this grant, he could go and be 
supportive as a, you know, in another grant that he's not a lead on, right? Because we love to see people collaborate. So it's not that people can only be involved in one thing. They can just only make, you know, kind of be the lead applicant for one. Um, this is the marketing piece that we talked about a little bit earlier, where I was saying with the survey that people are getting it from social media and word of mouth. So for there to be public benefit, people have to know that it's happening. We want to know that there is some sort of a plan uh, to get the word out there. And then we get into the budget. I'm sorry, I think I've got everything in the wrong spot here. So the budget can and often is and should be generally, you know, larger than than the amount that they're asking for, from the ACC, unless they're asking us to fully fund it. So when you get into the budget, you know, we, we do want to get an understanding as far as stipends, how many people are getting paid about how much um, versus supplies. There are certain things that we, we cannot, um, fund. So we cannot fund, uh, food refreshments, transportation, lodging. It doesn't mean that they can't be in the budget, but, you know, let's say, uh, in, in this case, they had $2,000 for of expenses for something like that. Then the amount that they're requesting from us would have to, uh, not include those $2,000 worth of expenses, right? Or if they did include it in the budget, we would have to adjust down and be sure that we were get, funding them less because we can't fund that and be clear with them. Um, we do, as we're going down the line here, because we do so much partial grant granting, we do want to know if they have um, the ability to uh, have a plan B or or uh, to be able to pull this off without us. And in this case, um, they've applied to all of these different cultural councils, which might look a little greedy, but actually I like to see it because it's happening in Belchertown and people from Amherst will go and Pelham and like all, all these, you know, they really do have an audience that they're drawing from here. And there's every reason that all of those cultural councils should be given the opportunity to support and fund it just like us. And then they'll have their their materials, which you would be able to go and open those and 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 read those. So, um, one of the the flags for me, having not looked at this one in a couple of years, is um, I think you know one of the things we really want to see is a we've got a location. We we would like to see a an actual date. Um, so maybe I didn't read in, just in the description as far as, is it happening over a weekend? Is it happening really over the course of weeks? You know, because for it to have public benefit, it has to happen. And, you know, having a, a, a date and a location and having someone from that location say, oh yeah, they're coming, we've got a plan, you know, and we support them coming here and doing this with us uh, goes a long way. So that was a lot of information. Does anyone have any questions? Well, I just want to say I want to just double re reiterate that point. I mean, we we will just we oftentimes disqualify grants that don't have dates, so that's that's a really um, important thing for us to know is that the venue is secured. You know, occasionally if somebody's got a, a date range and and a good reason why they can't pin one down, that's okay. Um, but like Julianne said, we we want to know this is going to happen. Yeah. Um. Also, I I skipped over this one about cost for participation. Um, you know, all events have to be open to the public. They don't have to be free. It costs money to, 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 to make art and culture. Um, however, we, we, we do really like to see, um, that if, if there is some cost to it, um, that, that, you know, in extenuating circumstances, people can be admitted who, who want to be there. Um, but it's not a hard and fast rule. Okay. Uh, and then as far as kind of the, the, the budget, you know, if you do have ticket costs, the ticket costs would go into the budget as one of the ways that you're offsetting the total expense of everything. And you'll see when we get into deliberating, you know, there is a little bit of a, a kind of a concept of, you know, what appropriate, what are appropriate amounts of stipends or, you know, if it's here, we've got 3,200 in stipends. Um, if they, 
haven't said how many people that's going to, you know, when, when we have, I don't know, like $50,000 worth of, of grants to give, you know, we, we would certainly have to be careful and know that we were giving one person $5,000 for one hour. Like that, I think we would never do that, but you know, like we, we do a little bit of kind of balancing, um, you know, what's reasonable. Hey, Kimberly. Um, yeah, so kind of branching off what we were just talking about, if someone has like a project that everyone is really in favor of, I don't know if this ever happens, um, but maybe we need more information from them before we decide to grant something, or maybe like there's something that needs to be tweaked about it, how would we go about that? Um, that's a great question. And, you know, we try to be super fair and really rely on the information that is in the in the grant right um but yes at times we we do reach out for for clarification you know when there's support when when we can however at a at a certain level if it's pretty complex and it's inconclusive um there are times when we've said, no, we really have to, yeah, it sounds great, but we're just missing too many pieces. It's not well thought out. And un unfortunately, you know, there, there are times when we've tried to really handhold some, some groups kind of through the process and, um, you know, that there are times when it just hasn't happened, like no matter how much you could help them. So we really do want to, to see well, well thought out, well planned, um, well kind of staffed, you know, things that are, that are coming through because they're, they're the most likely to, and the burden's even higher because we do direct granting now in, in the past, people had to complete the event and then document it to us to get reimbursed. And, um, even then sometimes it wouldn't come through, but now that they get the money up front, we, we don't necessarily have the, you know, they owe the money back if they don't do the grant as planned um, and without amending it, but you know, the money's out there. So we really have that, that extra level of um, responsibility to make sure we've got something that's solid. That makes sense. Thank you. Great. All right. I know we need to wrap this up. I don't think we're going to go through all Five. So I'm going to try to move a little bit more quickly here. Um, oh, wait, I know why I'm lost because I'm supposed to be using um, the bookmarks. So this next one here um, was one that came in and it was um, a music performance. Again, no solid date. And then it was going to be on, you know, is the idea is to have it on the local cable access TV, serving thousand people. Um, and just to kind of sum up when we got into this one, uh, I'm going to hop all the way to the end here, which is, I think, who else they might have applied to. And as I recall, I think they apply to like almost every local cultural council that was out there, right? So this was kind of a blanket type thing where, hey, if you give me money, then okay, then I'll get with your local TV group and, and actually put this thing together. But it, it wasn't really kind of a formalized, finished thing that had had a date had any kind of local commitment um so as as i recall in this case we decided that it, it just didn't have enough public benefit um to to move to move forward with it and that it was wasn't something that the, that our community was asking for um and uh and and that ended up being a pass matter Rachel do you have anything more to, to add on this one and one of the reasons this is a, an example that we're going through is that we usually get a couple handful of these each each year that um are just kind of general things that could come to your community or not Kimberly you still have your hand up or a new question oh sorry no I forgot to put it down okay 
I, I need to run, but I just wanted to say that I thought the um, the way that the process has been streamlined over the years it works seems to work quite well now, especially with the you know timing each discussion or each grant application. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that worked really well, and I think in most cases we were able to agree quickly when an application didn't fit the criteria. That that seemed to you know. So I think. Um, I don't recall any specific instances where that, you know, keep, we, there was any major disagreement over something like that. So hopefully it'll go um, smoothly um, in that respect this time as well. But it was nice to see all of you. And Thanks. I will, I guess we'll see you at the next meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, if anybody um, is uh, available to maybe look at a, a copy of the data once, um, I don't know how much we're going to actually alter it in terms of, I don't mean alter the data, I mean alter the presentation of the data. But I think um, if anyone has any suggestions or that's, you know, but like like we said earlier, it's it's really um, just to inform us as, as background information, you know, what, whatever's been collected. So thanks again, everyone. And I will thanks. see you next time. Yeah, thanks so much for doing that. It's really informative. Take care. Bye. 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 Um, are you starting to feel like you have a, a, a pretty good idea and you're not going to have all the answers? None of us, even those of us who've been here a couple of years, really have all the answers. We really are kind of, you know, piecing things together as, as we go through to understand. And, you know, as far as being ADA accessible, you know, none of us have gone to all of the venues, you know, and certainly if you're newer to the area, you know, it's, it's hard to, to know all of that. So you know, we'll, we'll go through as, as a group and um, make sure that we've got some great events for the community. Would it help to go through one or two more? We did. So the last three I have were kind of, I think more examples of things that were kind of strange and misses or not enough public benefit or not open to the public or things like that. Everybody's good. Stop sharing so I can understand what I'm doing. All right. You still there, Matt? I'm here. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really good. And I think it's, you know, we, we really can't get into too much of this nuance of, you know, what made one great or another. I just I think what's helpful is for our new members to really see that, <clears throat> you know, um, this is manageable. We're all, you know, busy working people and we are aware that time is limited. And so we've worked really hard to make this like a manageable ask, yeah. you know, in November and December, because it can feel way over, overwhelming if you're like, oh my God, I have to read all hundred grants in the next 24 hours. Like that's that's not how we manage it. And really we only we only read, you know, 10 or 20 between each meeting. It doesn't take that yeah. long. So. Yeah. But I would add that while Rachel said that usually we we can agree and and um I don't know, maybe maybe Matt and I have ended up as co-chairs because certainly in, in some grant cycles and certain grants, we've we've come at it from two totally different points of view and have, have disagreed, you know. And and I've really valued getting, you know, the 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 different perspective and the nuance. Um and and I know Matt certainly changed my, my mind on some a few times where it was like, oh, <laughs> It's like, no, no. Okay. Now I see it, you know? So it's, it's fine to have a different point of view. And quite frankly, we, we need that, you know, um, and we, we should all be able to, you know, certainly be respectful, but it's, it's, you know, that's how you're serving the community is to bring your fresh eyes and your fresh perspective to it. And if it's not adding up and it's not making sense to you, we need to know that, you know, don't, don't ever feel like you just have to Go well, everyone else. But no, 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 no. Thank you so much, Julian. That was good for me, even to have a refresher on it. I feel like, so. yeah, yeah. That's new cycle, new grants. We'll see what we get, and um, yeah, I'll I'll send out um, something pretty soon as far as trying to get some better dates uh, in in December. Um, where everybody can be there for that last meeting. Excellent.
thank you all. Really appreciate all of you. I'm looking forward to jumping into this when we're ready. We get everything soon. Thank you so much. See you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Cody.